Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm Skippy and welcome to another video. Well, if you've been following this series of the SE5A build, um, I apologise for the significant break. Obviously, I've been on holiday, um, so now I'm playing catch up. But great news that I've discovered today is I've actually reached 600 subscribers, so that's amazing. So for all of you new subscribers, thank you very much. For all of you current ones, the guys that have been with me for a lot longer, again, thank you for sticking with me. Um, and if you're watching this for the first time, um, please do subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. Everybody give it a thumbs up. Um, but yep, 600 subscribers. That's amazing. Thank you very much. As I'm hoping to have this as a flying model uh, for the undercarriage, I am actually going to use uh, some wire and as per the plan, bend it, install it onto the undercarriage legs. And hopefully that will give it enough strength that when I land it, it's not going to just snap. Um, what I'll also probably do is once I've covered the wire, sorry, once I've glued the wire to the wood, I'll wrap tissue paper around it as well just to give it a nice complete um, finish and it just has some extra strength once it's all doped up. The first wire bent, it's uh, not too far off. Obviously when I stick it down I'll make sure that it's uh, perfectly lined up on the wood but pretty happy with how that went. For the wheels I am going to use those that came with the kit and they are to scale. Um, as you can see this is glued together, uh, it's a bit shiny though so and also it's a bit hard for the landing, hopefully the landing gear uh, wire that I've got there will strengthen it um, but obviously to try and make the wheel look a little bit better I thought painting it may not work so I've gone from the standard plastic to this which I think looks quite good, looks a bit more rubber like, certainly not shiny anyway uh, and to achieve that what I've done is I've just used the sanding blocks these ones and just gone round the tyre, uh, roughed it up a little bit um, to just make it look a little bit more rubber-like in my opinion anyway. So I'm quite pleased with how that looks. Um, obviously I will paint the discs so you won't see the scratches in there. It just gives you an idea of how you can turn the shiny plastic into something that looks a little bit more rubber-like, in my opinion anyway. I'm going to try and sand some form of aerofoil shape into L6 which is the subwing for the gear I'll then put a small groove in it that I can then insert the wire because I'm going to have the wheels free rotating not the axles the axle will be glued in place and obviously threaded through uh, the down struts as well uh, so hopefully that'll all work out neatly okay I've sanded the wing for the undercarriage uh, quite pleased with the airfoil shape the way I did it is um, resting it on that sand block and then taking under the sand block just moving backwards and forwards slowly, uh, adjusting the angle till I got the airfoil shape. So pretty happy with that. Obviously tailors off to, or tails off to the back uh, and a little bit steeper at the front. Uh, and if you spin it around, it's not too bad. So it's pretty even all the way along. So I think, yep, that'll do. So what I'm now gonna do is put a slot, a groove down the center, uh, which will fit the wire in, uh, and then it will be all be ready for covering have a nice groove for the axle to fit into. Um, as you can see there, what I did, I marked it with pencil and then using this small screwdriver, just scored gently down the line until it got to an appropriate depth, which is roughly half the diameter of the wire. That then fits in nicely. Uh, so it will be nice and easy to secure and hopefully give it a little bit more strength. So that's the axle done. Okay, so I've built the gear, I've built the uh, gear wing, so there's the gear with the wire to strengthen it. Covered them all in um, the tissue and I've also doped them up to strengthen them. I've put the wire, the landing gear um, axle in through there. Uh, what I've just done with the K1 and uh, K, well, the L parts for the cabane and struts, taken them and I've just rounded them off gently to give them a, a little bit of an aerodynamic flow whether it make much difference I don't know but it looks a bit nicer rounded off also the key thing there is it gets rid of the burnt marks um, that you get on the edges from the laser cut so sanded those off nicely um, pretty even um, so I'll be looking at painting those wood brown same with the cabana struts here um, and so what I need to do next is I need to start uh, doping up the fuselage and wings so that they're ready for painting because um, as with the build, I'm going to have to paint it before I can put the uh, top wing on. So I think it just makes more sense to do it that way. So next phase, spraying the dope. 
and to do that I'm using a 50% water, 50% dope and I'm airbrushing it on. As you can see the tissue paper is pretty taut already um, which is great and I've also applied neat dope in the holes where the cabane struts and wing struts are going to go. Uh, also when I sealed the tissue on um, I've made my mix 50% water, 50% dope. Uh, the dope I'm using, if you can't remember, is the Easy Dope. Um, I've got my airbrush ready um, and I'm now going to apply the spray. I'll probably end up doing two, maybe three coats on all the surfaces. Just a nice thin layer. It builds it up nicely, tightens it and actually gives a bit of strength as I've discovered on some of my other models. Airbrushing is much neater and you tend to get away from those um, white air bubbly patches. So yep, yeah, I'll get cracking. That's the whole model now with a nice thin layer of dope all over the surfaces. Obviously it's drying out nicely now, so hopefully all that will all the tension will go in there and take out all the slack tissue. Um, it's looking a lot better underneath as well. And the good thing is with the airbrush, it's quicker um, and you don't get any unsightly marks. So it's a nice even flow. Just trying to struggle to zoom in there, but you can see obviously that's where the super glue leaked. Um, but yep, all nicely covered, and I need to decide what colour I'm going to paint this. The doping has all dried off nicely now, it gives it a much nicer look, feel. There's a slight showing sheen to it as well, which is good. Uh, and what I'm going to do before I've painted, or what I've done before I start painting, is cut the slots out. Because what I don't want is not be able to find them once it's covered up. I've cut the slot for the aileron arm to come through as well when it's ready because that'll obviously get painted over uh, and for the gear cut all the holes in there um, so yeah nicely doped up now ready for the painting color scheme wise um, I'm going to go for a more unusual um, color scheme um, so it'll be the standard linen underneath uh, then the green now there's much debate about what color green it should be so I'm just going to use one of my olive drabs and a mixture of uh, REF green um, what I'm trying to do is just use paint that I already have in my box rather than buy new stuff. Um, but I'm going to do this in a camouflage version. I'll put a picture on the screen now for you to see. I've never seen this before until I started looking into other colours the other day. Um, I'm not going to do it the chocolate brown. I'm not going to do it plain green because so that's a bit dull. I'm not going to do it the red fuselage. That look, does look quite cool. But I thought actually a bit of camouflage. Never seen it before. Gives that a go. Also uses up some of the paints I've got. So... Going to get on with the linen colour underneath. That's the linen colour sprayed onto the under surfaces. Um, it's not too dense on the wings, but it could just be that with the colour coming, th with the no, sorry, with no colour on the other side, it's just more letting more light through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the green on. Uh, once the green's on, I decide whether I need to do a second coat on the undersides. And look at the fuselage and the tail surface; it doesn't look too bad actually. So I might be just leave it like that. Uh, I'm happy with the, the striping on there because it just makes it a little bit more weathered. Right, I spared you the uh, minutes of watching me spray painting, but what you can see now, I've done the linen on the underside. On the wings, you can still see the wood, but actually I quite like that. It's not too bad on the tail. Uh, and the green um, seems to have taken a much, nicely, much nicer on the fuselage and the cowl, uh, but not so well on the wings so I'm going to do a second coat uh, on the wings and then hopefully call that quits um, I'm going to write pain with getting the mix right when they say milky is it is it full fat is it skimmed is it semi skimmed I don't know um, but for some reason it seemed to work better on the fuselage than it did on the wings so I'll give it another go and then what I'll do is I'll go around later and touch up any areas that I need to uh, with a brush such as under here so I don't overspray too much on the linen colour I will need to do a little bit on the linen, I think, but otherwise it's not too bad. But there we go, we're getting there. 
Okay, that's another second, well, that's the second coat of green, which is uh, a much better finish. I did 50-50 mix, uh, seems to work that well. I need to just touch up the wheels, hand paint those. I need to hand paint the rest of the uh, gear there just to tidy it all up. And again, just go around on the underneath the fuselage around the tail sections. Then I'll look at doing the other colours, but I'm going to let it dry for a good 12 hours now. Make sure it all dries up nice and tight. Before I can go on to the next stage of the, the painting, because obviously I'm going to look at doing the camouflage scheme, I need to apply some decals. So I've made them all. I've made them all myself. Um, if you haven't, or if you don't know how to do it, I've done a video on how to do the water slide and tissue paper. These are water slide. The reason I do it is I don't really like the bright blue and red that come with the kit. Um, so I've made my own. What I've done on these two here, these are the underwing, underside. I've marked out where they will go uh, with the aileron, so I'll cut them before I try and put them onto the wing. Uh, the upper surface ones I'll apply and then I'll slit the decal once it's dried off a little bit. But because of the control horn on the underside, um, I wanted to just have a better chance of getting it on neatly. So I marked, measured and marked out where it needs to be cut. Um, for the lettering, it's in white, very difficult to cut it out separately. So I've done a background of what should have been khaki, however, as with all things computer screens, once you put it against the real thing, it does look quite different. It looked quite good on the screen, not so good now. Um, so what I'll do once I've applied it, I'll try and paint in as much as I can with a fine brush, um, just to try and blend it in. But some of these numbers are going to get painted over. Same with the, um, the rudder markings, once I do the camouflage paint. I'm going to be applying these decals first to the tail. Uh, in preparation, I've coated it with some uh, thin satin varnish. I've also done the underside of the wing, because I might have a go at those as well. You can see the shine difference where I've sprayed it. Uh, hopefully that will give it a smoother, better finish to adhere to. If you've not seen my other video on how I do the water slides, I'll put a link in below, but that's what I'm going to get on with now. Okay, after much faffing with my decals, I finally managed to get the first set on. Uh, the reason I've put these on the tail is when I did the camouflage paint, those areas were actually painted over by the looks of it, but the roundels weren't. So I'll do the top roundels uh, once it's all painted up. Um, so yeah, I had issues. Uh, the first set uh, I printed on clear, which I didn't realise till I went to apply them, which is very annoying. I have since discovered it actually writes clear or white on the back of the paper. So there's a top tip there, check the back of the paper before you print. Uh, then the second set that I did, I think I must have left in the water too long or not put enough sealing varnish or um, I think I did use a bit of warm water and that may have not helped at all. So the actual decals then just tore at the back, so that was no good. Um, so this set finally got it right, printed on white paper, used cold water, two and a half minutes uh, and slid off carefully. Um, and yeah, quite a lot, well, a lot happier with the way it's just, uh, turned out. I will probably try and paint around those white lines on that one there. Uh, the roundels underneath have gone fine. Uh, one thing I didn't think about when I was putting it on, obviously with the, the uh, gap in the middle where the aileron is, uh, I should have reduced the size of the uh, offcut of the roundel and it would have lined up a little bit better. But from a distance, you probably won't notice that. Uh, and it is underneath. Um, the reason it's like that is I was having to cut it to fit around the aileron push rod or the control one, should I say, sorry. Uh, the top decals won't have that, so I'll apply them directly on and then just cut where the aileron is. Um, so yeah, decals done, finally. This is why this video is taking so long to get done. Uh, now I can get on with the camouflage paint. That's the camouflage painting done. Brown isn't as obvious as it is in the picture. But actually I quite like it like that. So it's all dried off now, so now I just need to apply the top wing roundels. Then I need to start putting it together. Upper wing decals are on. I've painted the wood um, for the struts and mains. Decals on the rear, everything's painted up. So now what I need to do is give it a coat of satin varnish just to try and seal everything. Uh, and then I can start looking at putting it all together and finishing off the electrics and then obviously the Push rods. I glued the lower wing on. You can see I've also connected electrics, uh, receivers installed, all plugged in. Tested it all, it all works nicely. The servo arms have pushed through the lower wing on both sides so they're ready to be connected. Uh, made sure everything worked, the motor span up nicely. 
Uh, now I need to move on and work out how I fit the wings on, or the upper wing on, and also the undercarriage. I'll probably do the undercarriage first. I've been putting this bit off because I knew it'd be a challenge. I'm not using a template. It doesn't say you need to in the instructions. So I thought I'd just try and do it. So I've tapered the ends of the struts so that they fit neatly into the slots in both wings. I'm gluing the main struts into the lower wing. Uh, once those are properly dried, I'll then apply the second wing on top and then I'll put in the cabane struts um, afterwards. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, I've glued the second wing on top now. Um, again, just use Juhu for now. Um, it's not perfectly straight on the fuselage, but you can adjust it. So when I put the cabane struts in, I'll make sure that, that all lines up. Um, but looking at the height, it seems pretty level, which is good. Uh, the way I did this, um, I turned the wings upside down, so basically put the top wing on the desk then applied the glue to the tops of the struts, um, placed the first, the front two in first, made sure they were fitted in and then carefully lined up the rear two and that seems to have gone okay. So I'm going to leave that a good few hours now to dry. What I will do then is super glue the bases as well just to make sure there's that extra strength before I then look at doing the cabane struts. Obviously you may note in that last bit there, I've actually put the undercarriage on, um, did it the same way, put the two leg pieces in with the wire through to keep it braced out. Um, and at the back there, what you'll note, I've put another piece of uh, balsa just to strengthen the join between the two wires because they didn't feel rigid enough. So hopefully that'll add a bit more strength to it. Uh, the wings in, the wheels are on, that side I bent the wire, glued the wire through so it's an axle. And on this side, there's just enough lip to stop that wheel sliding off. I may put something on there just to doubly make sure. But she's taking shape quite nicely. Main build is now complete. Struts are in. Everything's holding up nicely. Quite pleased with how it looks. <coughs> uh, I do also need to put the exhaust stacks in along here. Um, because of where the battery hatch is, I'm not going to be able to put the screen on because it will get in the way when I lift it. Uh, same with the gun rail that would be down here at the back. Um, I'm not going to put the gun on, so it's not going to be a scared airplane for which I apologise. Um, but obviously when it's flying, it will look like an SE5. Um, so she's looking pretty good, I think, really. Um, I now need to work out how I'm going to connect the rods to the ailerons, um, get all that set up and then get the finishing details. I may even try and put in some of the uh, the wire between the wings, not all of it because there's quite a bit, but maybe just a couple of cross braces, same on the tail, just to give it a little bit more effect, we'll see. So some detail, but not all detail, so a bit of a mismatch. Push rods have been attached now, connecting the ailerons together. Um, quite pleased how that worked actually, so I've used these components off an old foamy, some wire rod that I had which I managed to screw onto there, measured the gap using a bit of balsa and then fine tuned it with this because you can twist it up and on um, to try and get it all level. Uh, done the same on a, exactly the same on the other side as well. Um, but yeah, quite pleased with that now. So we both move with enough movement that should give quite good control. So yeah, that's the first part done. Didn't take as long as I thought, so very happy with that. But the key thing that made it easy is having these components here from the old foamers. There we go, happy days. Electrics are all wired up. I need to work out how to put the battery in a bit neater. But aileron, uh, sorry, rudder, ailerons, both working nice and together an elevator. Plenty of control there I think when it gets going and the motor works obviously. Happy days! To do the rigging on the model originally I was going to be using this uh, fishing wire um, which is nice and strong um, as you can see by the, the details there um, but I found trying to uh, 
get tension on it once it was into the model was really difficult so it was no give so you having to cut it exactly and I just couldn't do it uh, so I gave up on that I then thought I'd use this which is um, silver elastic this meant I could install it into the two holes and then feed it through and get tension on uh, the trouble is once I looked at it it was just t far too uh, wide the diameter was just too big and on the model it just looked well it looked wrong it looks right on my large um, 72 inch sort with putt but not on this small SE5A so eventually I settled with this the 0.5 mil elastic um, nice and thin it's grey looks a bit silver uh, and when it's on the model it doesn't look too bad at all uh, the issue I had is um, I think I've already said drill the holes before you put the wings on because it's easier uh, but putting this or threading this into a hole was quite tricky so Threading it through the bolsa is all well and good when it's on a single piece like this, um, but it kept falling out and even if I used super glue it just wouldn't stay in place. Uh, so eventually I thought about using these small metal fishing crimps. Um, you can crimp the elastic in there as you can see on this picture uh, and then it's quite f solid so it will fit perfectly into the drill hole and the super glue takes really quickly. Uh, fortunately I had a bag of these lying around um, which I've used on pre or tried to use on previous models um, but yeah so that my advice if you want to get this elastic fitted into the model is use these metal crimps they go in nice and neatly uh, and once the glue's set they're properly properly fixed in Here I have the manifold and exhaust made, uh, the plastic manifolds from the kit I've used cut in half because of course when it goes on, the fuselage it's going to be uh, split across the battery hatch and the body. Uh, and then for the exhaust themselves I've used paper straws uh, wrapped in black tissue paper and to keep it all neat I've actually wrapped the plastic in the same black tissue paper. Uh, it just gives a nice matte finish. Uh, so quite pleased I just now need to create the bolsa uh, pieces that will join the plastic manifold to the exhaust uh, and then look at mounting it all onto the model. Here we go, exhaust manifold and exhaust now glued on, uh, split on the hatch where you can see, uh, glued underneath, use bolsa to attach the straw exhaust. Uh, at the back of the rear sections here I've drilled two holes because obviously air is going to get trapped in that gap there probably. So I'm hoping that with a little couple of holes, see if I can show you, um, any air that builds up in there may, I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully anyway, it'll help try and ease the airflow. So there are two holes drilled, you can't really see, put the cockpit in there. Um, so yeah, that's all built. Obviously if you're building this yourself, you can do a lot more detail. You can add the gun, you can add the, the uh, windscreen, you can add more rigging lines. Uh, I really wanted to put the rigging lines under here, but uh, I don't think it's going to fit so easily. Um, but for now, I'm very happy with my SE5A. Now I'll do some photos for the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful. Uh, if you've got any comments, uh, please feel free to leave them. Thank you very much.